episode, we're at one of the most amazing dive locations in New Zealand, White Island. The weather forecast was really good, and on short notice, me and my mate John headed out to try and get into some nice blue water. We weren't disappointed. The visibility on this day was absolutely amazing, which you can often get at White Island at the right time of year. There was a little bit of wind and we sort of had a plan where we might go exploring. We don't dive there all the time, so it is awesome being able to go to new places and check it all out. I got John to drop me in the water just so I can just check what the viz was like and see if there's a few fish around at the first spot. With this amazing visibility, it's so great because you have a big field of view on the way down to the bottom. There was quite a bit of current and it picked up during the day, so we have to be mindful where we anchor the boat and where we're going to swim from the boat. We ensured we took our float boat with us with a flag and we swam up into the current. So if the current got too strong, we could drift back to the boat nice and easy. It didn't take long and then John mentioned that he thought he saw a big terakee down on the bottom. I was a little bit dubious as we're in about 25 meters of water and I couldn't quite see it. I thought maybe he just saw a poor eye or a blue mokey, but it looked like a nice spot. And sure enough, on the way down, one of those really nice big white island terakee appeared. There is a great diversity of fish that you can find and enjoy at White Island. It's not just about kingfish. Good one, eh? Huh? It's a good one. I told you. I couldn't see it. With that sort of promise, we punched into the current a bit more and I was trying to convince John that we need to get right up ahead of all the fish and all the reef. We followed the weed edge along the sand further up into the current. And luckily with the amazing visibility you could still make out the edge in 30 meters. Just amazing blue water. As close as we often get in New Zealand to diving in the tropical islands. This is good looking area as well as you can see on the weed edge. There's broken ground and there's rocks coming off. Big schools of demoiselles, blue mammal. There was even a good school of snapper here, which can be 
a little uncommon at White Island, but we're seeing more and more every time we go there. With this clear water, I get so excited and I want to explore deeper and further afield as you normally wouldn't be able to see the bottom. And it's difficult to navigate with lots of current. But on this day, we could swim right out wide and be able to navigate in really deep water. We got to the edge of the reef and there were still big clouds of blue mau mau and the odd kingfish coming through. But it wasn't really exciting. We want to try and find some demozels, some koheru and other bait fish which bigger pelagics, as well as big reef fish might be inclined to feed on. We started getting a little far from the boat, so we began our drift back towards it down the edge. This tends to be a lot easier to do these deeper dives as you're not having to fin into a strong current like we had today. Again, I stopped on a nice bit of edge here where you see big rocks coming out off. This is more likely where the fish will congregate. Having a bit more oxygen on my dies as I don't have to fin into the current, I'm trying to be a little bit more specific and a little bit more detailed with searching amongst the rocks and under rocks to see if there's any interesting fish. And I spot out in the distance there, there's a really nice big golden snapper parked up between two rocks. Although normally an easy fish to spear, you still need to be a little bit cautious approaching them as they'll often go for their cave, especially in this clear water. Although not always a target species for sparrows, as often they live in really, really deep water or they can be difficult to find due to low numbers, areas like White Island are quite a good place to go looking for them. There's so much deep water around it, amazing country for getting them, and you do tend to find quite a few. They do make really nice eating as they have beautiful white flesh. They just have two lines of bones that you need to be aware of when filleting them. And this golden snapper will add to the variety of our fish we're going to get for the day. John has gone back to the boat, so I make my way close to the boat just to be safe and stay close to the dive flag. The tide is picking up more and more, so I head in a little bit shallower as well. This jumble of rocks here seemed to be a really good congregation spot and was a really nice dive.
jutted out off the edge. It's a good spot that's going to catch the current and in turn all the fish are going to hang around it. Really nice. You've got big blue mochi drifting out off the sand in to inspect me. A nice kingfish in the background. Blue mochi aren't so much on my target list as I don't really enjoy eating them. So they're better for me just to watch. But these blue mau mau on the other hand, although they've been swimming around us all dive, they do make nice eating. And these are really nice big ones that you get at White Island. Happy with our first dive, we move spots and as we were driving along we happened to drive over a piece of reef in shallow water. So I got John to anchor the boat and I jumped in to have a look. Of course there was more big blue mau mau everywhere. As well as that being shallower it was easier to look through all the different cracks and rocks to see what things we might find. Due to the shallow reef having close proximity to deep water, just like all around White Island, you do get lots of scorpion fish. This is one of John's favourite fish to eat, so he was really happy to get in the water and try and get some. They make a very, very easy target, but obviously it's just finding them that can sometimes be the difficult part. They're fantastic in risottos as they're nice, strong white flesh and taste similar to crayfish. A common sought after fish that people eat all around the world. Notice how carefully John tries to handle the scorpion fish. They have nasty spines all over them that you need to be care cautious of. John has no respect for the tip of his spear, so he has no problem shooting these things point blank into rocks. Whereas I tend to be a little bit more cautious. But it works perfect for me, I get to eat it, but I don't have to worry about blunting my spear. Two of these scorpion fish made the perfect amount of meat for the risotto we ate the next day.
John had spotted a really nice big blue mama amongst the school that he wanted to spare, so I told him to wait so I could film him. He picks the big one out and manages a decent shot. These blue mau mau being so big and fatty, they're quite rich to eat. So for us, one was enough each. And off to the next spot. We thought we'd jump in and check out Lazen's Reef, which everybody knows about at White Island. It's an incredible pinnacle that comes out of about 100 to 150 metres, all the way up to about 12 or 13 metres, I believe. An incredible spot and so bizarre to dive as it's so deep around it. It certainly feels like one of those sort of places you never know what you might see. Normally known for its big kingfish, but often these days they do get targeted pretty heavily, so they do tend to stay pretty deep. On this particular day, we weren't necessarily targeting kingfish, but always prepare just in case a real monster happened to swim by. There was a good amount of current running on the reef and I managed to get up in front of it. And sure enough, you get a few decent sized kingfish starting to come up to see what I'm up to. But there'd been a lot of boat traffic on it all day, and there didn't seem to be anything too big on it. Put it in pinky, John. Woohoohoo! <laughs> like I said, I hope, sorry, what I was gonna say was we've just gone picking and oh, I'll just these fuckers so they don't get off. We're absolutely buzzing at this point of the day. It was just so great diving in this nice clear water, and I really enjoy exploring new ground. So we thought we'd dive one more spot before heading home. We'll drive around, sounding around, looking for a nice bit of country on the sounder, and then anchor up and have a look. This was an awesome bouldery bank that was absolutely covered in pink mammal, just like most areas at White Island. Being a really prolific species, we waited to the end before we shot a few of them. Like most species at White Island, everything is bigger in size than most of the other areas we tend to spearfish.
The current was a lot more gentle in the spot, so it was much easier to dive than some of the other areas we dove. But of course, you want to dive where the current is strong, so that's most likely where you're going to get the bigger fish and more fish. It was a typical sign of low current as you get things like pink mau mau, demizels, and all sorts starting to congregate and move underneath rocks. And you never know what you might find looking underneath rocks, like this Lord Howe coral fish. They're actually reasonably abundant at White Island compared to most areas in New Zealand. No matter where you're diving in the world, this sort of country is always great for fish. These big, big boulders that roll down to the sand and create a beautiful edge and great places for reef fish and whatnot to congregate underneath them. Especially when they're protruding out in current, it's even better again. On the way down, I spot another one of those big white island terakee. So I try and get myself in a good ambush situation. It's being a little bit cautious, so I'm just going to wait a little bit to allow it to come a little bit closer in range. This is a great spot for me to remember for next time as I'm sure you get lots of nice fish hanging out here. Even though lots of these fish are small reef fish species, at Wild Island they all tend to be good size and it's amazing the amount of flesh that you end up getting off them. You don't need too many fish and all of a sudden you've got plenty of meat for the week. And just behind the boat I thought I'd have a quick look around the boulders, it's not very deep here. See if I might find a crayfish or some other really interesting reef species that you can find in White Island. In the first random rock I look under, I happen to spot another nice sized golden snapper. This one had obviously found nice shelter up in the shallows under this rock. As mentioned in a lot of other areas in New Zealand, they're normally a deep water species. But at offshore islands like White Island, you can see them up nice and shallow. Having already speared one today, I called out John to get him over to see if he wanted to try at it.
They're beautiful colours when you see them in shallow water. And John was stoked this was his biggest golden snapper he speared. And a good size one too. And that tops off an amazing day for us. We head back on flat seas and with a really good variety of fish. Heading out to places like White Island are not always just about kingfish, there's plenty of other things to be had there as well. Hey mate! Oh no, wrong, wrong people! Wrong person! <laughs> 